If a high school student is interested in, in a career in science research, um, at a liberal arts college, they will get direct access to bench work very quickly. They will get a lot more mentoring, not only in, in the research opportunities that we offer, say, through summer fellowships, but also even within their lab courses themselves. The lab sections are much smaller. They're not run by a grad student or a TA. They're run by the professors for the most part. Um, and there's just a lot more face time in general. We're in the midst of an obesity epidemic. I think everybody acknowledges that and uh, it's, it's well appreciated. Um, and getting to the underpinnings of that, both biologically and environmentally, socially, uh, is important. So uh, what we have here is, a, a, again, an array of new compounds, a dozen, more than a dozen, um, that could potently influence food intake and perhaps provide potential treatment or a component of treatment that will help people, uh, you know, work with eating-related disorders, metabolic-related disorders, uh, things, things with that nature so they can overcome some of these challenges. You may have heard of leptin. That's a hormone that was discovered 15 years ago. It's secreted by your fat cells, so it provides a uh, your brain a good indication of how, how much adiposity or fat your body is carrying and provides feedback to perhaps supp suppress food intake. Um, and so perhaps this could be a treatment for humans and a lot of in work has been uh, aimed at sort of exploring these circuits. Uh, more than 10 years ago, researchers found that uh, giving people leptin injections was ineffective. It didn't help them lose weight. It didn't really help to suppress their food intake. And uh, the current thinking now is that people have become insensitive to the leptin in their blood. Um, and what researchers are looking at now is trying to find bypasses or shunts around the leptin-sensitive uh, neurons to look at areas in the brain that receive input from the leptin-sensitive neurons. My lab is uh, focused on looking at just one of these areas, a small structure in the brain called uh, the parabrachial nucleus. From a very fundamental level, like all Medicine technology is built upon fundamental science, and this is one of those basic science things. But it also, you could see that it has immediate practical applications. And we're seeing um, how the parabrachial nucleus, we call it the PBN, mediates um, different behaviors associated with feeding. For example, there's something called conditioned taste aversion, where if a rat eats something and then it gets sick soon afterwards, it'll avoid that for like a long time. The way that students have helped me conduct this research is that I've tried to integrate them in every level of the research, from collecting the data all the way up to publication of the papers that we report uh, in scientific journals. So, uh, in that sense, I've used the university model of a graduate student, and I've been successfully able to apply that here with the Amherst students. They're very um, you know, dedicated and, and willing to commit many hours, and they're very uh, bright and skilled as well. It's like the first experience where I feel like I'm learning more than, faster than I've ever learned like at any other program or even during the school year, just because you're doing so much every day. It's more structured and you know that there's a definite goal or purpose towards your work.